Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's count down the top 10 keyboard shortcuts for the Mac. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So some keyboard shortcuts are more useful than others. If you had to make a list of keyboard shortcuts, which ones would be in the top 10? And how would you even rank them? Well, I came up with the way. Here's my methodology. First, I started with my own keyboard shortcuts PDF. I've been maintaining this for years, updating it with each version of Mac OS. So I figured if anything was going to make the top 10, it was going to be listed here. And if you want to get your own copy of that, it's available for free at MacMost.com. You can see it right here on the front page. So then I went through the list and pulled out the ones that I thought had a chance of being in the top 10. As it turns out, I came up with 16 good options. So when trying to think of how to rank them, I looked to the world of sports. They do it with playoff brackets. So I did the same thing but with keyboard shortcuts. In Numbers, I built a special spreadsheet that acts as a bracket here. And I listed all the keyboard shortcuts I wanted to include and had them randomly put into the outside brackets. Then I was able to use checkboxes to figure out which ones advanced to the next round. And I would do that until I had a champion. And when it was done I had points assigned based on how far each shortcut got in the competition. Now that would only tell me the top two and then there would be a bunch of ties after that. So what I did is I randomized the outer brackets again and ran through the competition over and over and over and then added all the points up until I had a clear top 10 list. I used various criteria in determining who won any given match. Usually how useful the keyboard shortcut was, whether there are other ways to do it, how often people use it, how well it's known, that kind of thing. Now you may agree or disagree with my results. It's all very subjective and it's really just a bit of fun. Let me know how you think this turned out in the comments below. So I'm going to do more than just read off the top 10. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for each keyboard shortcut as we go along. So at number 10 comes Command I. So Command I we usually use in the Finder when we select a file. Go to File and then Get Info. It's just Command I and you get this window here that gives you all this additional information about the file. And you can usually adjust things as well like Tags here or Add Comments. You can also use Command I in other apps. Like for instance in Preview here I have an image open and Command I will bring up the Info window which gives me more information about the photo and I can even get metadata from inside the photo file. And here in QuickTime Player Command I also brings up more information about the video I have open. One tip is that you can also use the Option key here to modify this. So you can see File Get Info is Command I. But if I hold that Option it's Show Inspector. The Inspector is the same as the Get Info window. So Command Option I except that it always floats on top and it will stay there and show you information for whatever you have selected. So you don't have to open new Get Info windows to see the information for other files. Plus you can select multiple files and it will give you totals like the total size for all those files. So at number 9 we have Command A. I use this one all the time. It's an easy way to select all. You'll find it under Edit. Select all right there. So I can do Command A and it selects all the text in this document. So now I can hit the Delete key to delete it all or I can change a style like maybe change the font for everything. I don't have to select by dragging. You can also use it in other places like in the Finder here I can do Command A and it selects all the files in the current window. In Keynote I can select one item at a time or I can hold Shift or Command to select multiple things. But if I do Command A it just selects all of these items. So I can clear this slide out easily with Delete or I can drag and all the items selected will move together. At number 8 we have Command H for Hide. Command H is found in the Application menu here and it's Hide and hide whatever application is currently showing. So Command H is a quick way to get rid of all of the app windows for an app. In this case Reminder just has one window open. So Command H will do that. Another Command H gets rid of Notes. And you can bring back apps just by relaunching them or using the App Switcher since they're still running. So I can easily bring something back. It's an alternative to using Minimize which puts things into the dock. At number 7 we've got FN or the Globe key and E which brings up the Emoji and Special Characters viewer. Now this is the new version of the shortcut. The old version which still works exactly the same is Control Command Space. And in reality I still use Control Command Space all the time. But both of these keyboard shortcuts do the same thing and bring up the Special Character Viewer. As soon as you get there you're already in search mode. 
So if you're looking for a particular emoji you can just start typing and it will bring up anything that matches. There's a lot more than just emoji here as well. For instance you can type flag to see all the flags or the name of a country to go right to that flag. You can type the name of a math symbol to get other types of symbols like this. It's basically a way to bring up any special character in any app where you type text. Now at number 6 we have Command V which of course is Paste. Paste really is nothing without copy which we're going to get to later as you could probably guess. So assuming that you have copied something like this you could go and paste it elsewhere with Command V or Edit Paste. And you can also do that across apps. A handy modification of this is being able to paste but without the text styling. So for instance say I had some text where there was a bunch of stuff that was bold and maybe some stuff that had different colors and if I selected that, copied, and then went to another app and pasted you can see how it keeps all that styling. But if I wanted to just paste plain text you can see under Edit there's also Paste and Match Style which is Option Shift Command V in the case of Mail. Other apps sometimes have it slightly differently. So now I can paste here and you can see it just used the style that I was already typing with in this message. And paste can also be used to make a copy of a file. So let me copy a file here with Command C and I'll go to another location and let's say I want to paste a copy of that file. You can see here under Edit Paste Item is Command V and if I hold the Option key down it changes to Move Item. So it would remove it from its original location and put it here. So I'm just going to paste a copy with Command V and I get a copy of the file. The original is still where it was before. So it's a handy way to copy or move files around without dragging and dropping. At number 5 we have Command F. And you can use Command F here in the Finder to find files. So as you do that you get all of the search options right here. Something you don't normally get if say you were just clicking on this magnifying glass icon there to start a search. And using Command F in the Finder is also a better way to start searching for files other than using Spotlight because Spotlight searches for all sorts of other things in other places as well. If you know you want a file just go to a Finder window and use Command F. But of course you can also use Command F in Documents and you can search for words with that. And a really handy place to use it is on a web page. A lot of people don't realize that when you get to a long web page like this and you want to look up information you can do Command F and search for words on the page to quickly find them in long lists of data or in lots of text. And number 4 is the Quick Look shortcut which is just the space bar. But alternatively it's also Command Y. Either one brings up the Quick Look window and is a great way to preview files. You can see how easily I can view this image file here to determine if it's what I want. But I could also view PDFs. I could also view text files. I can even view numbers files. Look how Quick Look even allows me to look at the different sheets inside this numbers document. And if you select multiple files in the Finder and hit Space you can use the arrow keys or these buttons here at the top to flip through the items that you've selected. You could also click up here and go into a thumbnail view. Plus Quick Look allows you to select one item, go into Quick Look and then you can use the arrow keys still to move around in the Finder. So down arrow will take me to the next file and notice how the Quick Look window stays there as I move through the files. And another thing you can do is modify this with the Option key. So Option and Space will show you Quick Look but in full screen mode. So now we're at the top 3 keyboard shortcuts. At number 3 we've got a keyboard shortcut that may be the first one that most people ever learn and that's Command C for Copy. And of course we've already looked at this when we talked about Command V for Paste. Command C is the first step. So you can select some text say in a document and use Command C which is the equivalent to Edit copy. And this places whatever you've selected into the clipboard. So now you can paste it somewhere else. But it works in many more places than just text. For instance you can select an element here in Keynote, copy, and then paste to paste a copy of it either here or on another slide or maybe even in another app. I can go to Mail here after having copied that image in Keynote and paste and that image will appear even with the border from Keynote inside the mail message. And here's a trick a lot of people don't know. If you go in the Finder to the Edit menu, the Edit menu for the Finder has Show Clipboard. 
bring that up and you get a little window that shows you the contents of the clipboard whether it's text, an image, or something else. It even gives you some information about what type of item this is. So now we're at number two and that's going to be Command Space for Spotlight. A lot of people love this shortcut because there's so much you can do with it. You of course can use this to search for files and you can get access to the file that you want but you can also use it for so many other things. For instance if you search for just a regular term like this you may get files, you may get links to start web searches here, you'll get dictionary definitions, you get documents that have that word inside the document, you get email messages, you'll get photos, you'll get results from the music app, you'll get images on the web, other types of documents, bookmarks, all sorts of things. You can control exactly what shows up in Spotlight by going to System Settings and then go to Siri and Spotlight. And then under Spotlight you'll see all the different kinds of results and you can turn some of these off if you don't find them useful. Now you can also do all sorts of other things in Spotlight. For instance you can do quick math equations like that and you can even use parentheses to do more complex things than you could usually do in the calculator. You can do currency conversions like this. You can do unit conversions like this. You can search for weather information like that. Get more. You can get flight information right inside of Spotlight. There's so much you can do in Spotlight. And now that brings us to the number one keyboard shortcut for the Mac and that's going to be a shortcut that has been around since almost the very beginning. It's one of the most important things and yet still today some people don't use it to its fullest. And that's Command Z for Undo. So of course Command Z will allow you to easily undo a change. For instance if I delete this paragraph here and I realize that's a mistake Command Z will undo. You usually find this in the Edit menu right at the very top. But you can do more than just one step. I can delete this word here, these words here, these words here, and these words here and then undo each one of those by using Command Z multiple times. And that works in almost any app. So here in Keynote I can move this image here. I can delete this text here and I can change this text here and then I can undo each one of those with Command Z, Command Z, and Command Z. You can even undo things in the Finder. For instance I can delete a file and then Command Z to put it back. I can do the same thing if I rename a file. Command Z will undo that. So I can move this file, I can delete this file, and I can rename this file and then Command Z, Command Z, and Command Z will reverse all of that. Still today I get a lot of questions with somebody saying I made a mistake, I deleted something I shouldn't have, I changed something I shouldn't have and I wasn't able to find a way to get that back. But when I asked them well did you try Command Z they didn't realize that they could do that in that situation thinking that it really only applied say when you're editing text or something like that. So Command Z is the big winner. Job well done or undone as the case may be. I think we all wish that we had Command Z in real life as well as on our Macs. So there's my list of the top 10 keyboard shortcuts on the Mac. Hope you found this entertaining as well as useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.